Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappy, and I've never been that much of a dog person. When I was younger, I wanted a cat, but my father was allergic, and having seen the horror that is Knowles, I think he's just gonna have to take one for the team. Today, we talk about the humble hyena person, from the regular Knoll to the irregular Knoll, and you'll learn how to keep your town from being caught in the jaws of defeat. As always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion, so if you feel like I don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to play your games however you want. But before we begin, I need to take a moment to talk about your favorite advertisement, Out of the Box encounters for 5th edition. With my sickness gone, I can shunt away the tissues from both influenza and a lack of influence on my D&D encounters, both of which can be supplied by using out of the box. Yes sir, just pull a page from the book and plug it right into your own D&D session, or your nose, be wary of paper cups. And if you want to thank the makers personally, then you can use the pledge manager to buy tickets to Nerdarchy, the convention where you'll meet the nerdy boys themselves and potentially some other smiling faces. Nerdarchy, made for nerds, by nerds. But with out of the way, let's begin. So gnolls are demonic hyena furries diluted to their base form. They're a bunch of bipedal human-animal hybrids that want nothing more than to be as loud as inhumanly possible and then bore you to death. Your average gnoll is the kind of guy who'll get together with his gnoll buddies and then crash into a village and eat all the babies they can find and then puke out a hairball of gnoll consequence. The entire species is dedicated to the vor of the entire universe, and for that purpose, any gnoll's a goal. The gnoll hierarchy is established by whichever gnoll ate the last baby, and their names for things are so silly that they must be the entire reason why hyena Laugh. You've got your fleens, your hunters, your fangs, your weatherlings, your pack lord. Really, a warband is just the most basic idea of what you could expect a bunch of baby ears to have, with the one pack lord leading the charge as they play the largest and most controversial game of Pac-Man. But above them lies the ultimate hyena OC, do not steal, and that is Yinagu. Yinagu is a bad dog, and one day he got so tired of constantly being called a bad boy that he did the only reasonable thing and heckin' murdered everybody, realizing that as one of the most pure evil things alive, there was was almost no way he could go back to being a good boy and make his owner proud, he instead set out to destroy all life in existence, because if everyone but him is dead, then that'll leave him to rule over the corpses as the goodest boy alive. Yinagu is actually such a bad boy that he convinces other hyenas and people into being bad dogs just like him, and the only thing more dangerous than a swarm of diseased demon wolves tearing down your fortress is a cultist that refers to himself as a bad dog. The cultists of Yinagu even go so far as to write him slam poetry in their spare time. Check out these bars. First gift is hunger. It's his blessing. It's our call to bring death. The second gift is death. Death proves our strength. Death purges our fear. The third gift is fear. Fear that we will fail him. We fear the onset of hunger. Uh. And finally, pretty much the last thing there is to say about gnolls, since there really isn't a lot of information on them besides hyena demons with very convincing smiles, is the main dwarven tactic for dealing with gnolls. Technically, this only applies to dwarves, but I like to think that everybody does this to some extent because it goes to show the difficulty in actually getting gnolls to leave an area. First step. Pull back your forces. Any dwarves, humans, whatever you consider your people, bring them all back home because gnolls tend to go after caravans and travelers instead of well-fortified dwarf fortresses. Step two, send out spies, again, not dwarves, to all of the nearest non-dwarf settlements under the guise of looking for an outlaw or something, and keep doing this until one of those spies doesn't report back. This is where we get to phase three. You spam as many dwarf warriors as you can into that settlement that had the non-responsive spy in it, and if everything goes right, you should see a lot of engorged gnolls that are fat and slow now because they just ate an entire town full of people. This is your time to strike. Take down the gnolls while they're at their most heretical, their inflation fetish. And you will have saved your dwarven lands from gnolls while also peacefully acquiring new lands. You follow these steps and you'll never have to worry about gnolls again because your neighbors will slow them down with their squishy meat bodies. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, check out my social media in the description below, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can fatten up my friends in case of a gnoll attack. But yeah, Davy out.